He wanted to rid himself of this problem. What did he do? He called for Uriah to come back from Amman to Jerusalem. And he encouraged him to make a relationship with his wife. But he refused. Why? Because his colleagues were fighting the Ammonites at the walls of the citadel. And during that time, he thought that it's not acceptable to make fun and to enjoy his time with his wife while actually his colleagues are still fighting the Ammonites. So that's why he refused to make a relationship with his wife. So King David thought of another way to rid himself of this problem. He wrote a letter to Joab and he asked him to keep Uriah in the front line where fighting is the heaviest and to retreat back. So he will be killed and by doing so he will get rid of Uriah. And this is what happened. He wrote the letter and he sent it with Uriah to Joab and Joab kept him in the front line and he retreated where actually Uriah was killed at the walls of the citadel. And after his death, King David married Bathsheba. They got a son, but their son was very sick, and he died in his childhood. And later on, they got another son whom they called Solomon, and he became the next king after his father. So this story happened here at the walls of the citadel. Jabal al qalaa in the eastern part of Amman, the old part of the city. And the remaining part of the story took place in Jerusalem, where actually after the death of Uriah, King David married Bathsheba. Amman continued to become prosperous across the old history, where during the Greek-Roman period, it was chosen as one of the Decapolis cities. It was the last Decapolis city in the south. And if you remember that the Decapolis cities were stretching from Damascus in the heart of Syria to Philadelphia, Amman in the heart of Jordan, where the name Philadelphia being launched after Philadelphus occupied the city at the end of the 3rd century BC, beginning of the 2nd century BC. And he changed the name from Amun to Philadelphia, which means brotherhood love according to his name, Philadelphus. And during the Byzantine period, it became a prosperous city since actually it was considered as a bishop city, where on the top of the mountains they built seven churches during the Byzantine period being decorated with mosaic art. During the Islamic period, the city again flourished in trade, where the trading caravans were supposed to pass by the city of Amman to sell their products to the locals before they submit their products towards the port of Aqaba to the whole world, to Europe, the Far East and India. So actually the Umayyad Caliph chose from the citadel a settlement for his army, for his, their families, for himself and for his family. He built an Umayyad palace, Umayyad mosque, Umayyad bath and market where after the Muslims, during the Turkish period when they occupied Jordan in between 1516 and 1918, it became part of the Ottoman Empire. And Ottomans left their own influence in the old part of the city. Currently you are in the western area, where most of the buildings are modern, comparing with the eastern area, which is very, very old. All of the buildings are dated to the Turkish period, where well, the oldest part is going back to the Greek-Roman period as well as the Byzantine period. In God's grace, a couple of seconds and we are going to park opposite to Taipei restaurant. So alhamdulillah, assalamu Thank God for your safe arrival. We have reached to Taipei restaurant. It's time for food, time for fuel. So once we go down from the 